As you get older, your sex life doesn't have to go away. In fact, it can be as vibrant and as enjoyable as it was in your youth. I'm Dr. Rita Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today I'm gonna share eight tips that can help you keep a wonderful and vibrant sex life even as you progress into older age. Make sure you stick around till the end because the last one might actually surprise you. Number one is take your time. So as you age, responsive desire becomes more common. Now, what is that? Responsive desire is one that comes in response to sexual contact or arousal that actually happens kind of slowly and builds. So it's not the kind of spontaneous desire that you see when you're younger and you see your partner across the room, you get super excited and you go jump them, right? That doesn't happen as often at older age, but it doesn't mean that anything's wrong. It just means that it takes a little bit more time. Spend time in that place of foreplay where you can actually feel each other, enjoy each other in other ways before for penetrative sex. Number two, have sex in the morning. And why is that? Well, the reason for this is because our bodies create testosterone, right? Testosterone is a hormone that's produced by the body that is responsible in large part for libido. Your sex drive is very correlated with how high your testosterone is in some people. So your testosterone level can be correlated with how high your sex drive is. So it works with our circadian rhythm. Now what that means is that it's highest in the morning and it continues to decrease throughout the day. So if I checked your testosterone first thing in the morning, it's gonna be very, very high or the highest it is. And then throughout the day, it's gonna to continue to decline. And then after you sleep, it's gonna go and increase back up again. So capitalize on that and have sex in the morning rather than at night. Also when fatigue is at its highest peak at nighttime, when it's a little bit harder to get yourself in the mood if you're really tired. Number three, experiment. So as you age, your genitals can actually get a little bit more numb over time. And this is because just as as you age, your nerves age as well. And so some people might notice that it requires a little bit more stimulation to reach climax. And some women may also notice it's very difficult to orgasm when it didn't used to be as difficult before. So while there's a number of different causes for these things, some of it can be due to genital numbness. And so in those cases, you may wanna experiment. What I tell my patients is that if you look at the spinal cord, there are sensors on the spinal cord. These can include pressure, temperature, vibration. And so it's important to kind of experiment with different types of things that actually stimulate those different areas of the spinal cord. So that can include using vibration with sex toys, using warming or cooling lubricants, using different types of pressure or different types of light sensation with like feathers or things like that, or even using different sorts of things you can find with BDSM that may actually provide more sensation to your genitals or other areas of the body. Now, of course, if you're going to use anything like that, make sure you have the consent of your partner. And if you're using a warming or cooling lubricant, make sure that you try it on your hand or your arm somewhere away from your genitals first so you know what it feels like and how much to apply on the genitals because it can actually be uncomfortable for some people who have sensitive skin. Number four, check out the medications you're on and your other medical issues. There's often other things or medications that can affect sex drive and libido that can actually make you not as interested in sex as you used to be. And so make sure you review those, talk to your doctor, and see if there's anything that can be changed. If you are struggling with a low sex drive, make sure you check out my video where I talk about all the causes of low sex drive. Number five, use lubricant. And for postmenopausal women, use vaginal estrogen. So very specific to women who are peri and postmenopausal, they often decrease the amount of personal lubrication that they make. And this is because of a number of different things, but the number one reason is because of a loss of estrogen that is produced in the vagina. So adding a lubricant to sex can make sex less uncomfortable and actually a whole lot more pleasurable. In fact, I just read an article the other day about how using lubricant actually improved desire and orgasms. If you wanna get a full update on that, comment below and I'll make a video about it. I've also made a video about the three types of lubricants and how to choose a lubricant. In that video, we talk about water-based lubricants, oil-based lubricants, and silicone-based lubricants and how to choose the best one for you. So make sure you check that one out as well. Vaginal estrogen. So you might be saying like, why would I need to take estrogen, right? Well, one is 
because estrogen actually increases the amount of lubrication you make naturally. So that's one reason. The second reason, it keeps the pH of your vagina acidic, and so it can prevent it from having other issues like recurrent urinary tract infections. And vaginal estrogen is extremely safe. There has never been reported blood clot, cancer, anything like that, anything abnormal associated with the vaginal formulation of estrogen. However, because the oral estrogen has had some issues, the same label is on both formulations of the medication. However, vaginal estrogen is extremely, extremely safe. You can get it in a suppository form, which is like a little pill you put in the vagina twice a week at night. You can get it in a cream form, which you can rub in like lotion at night or use an applicator. And you can get a ring placed by your doctor every three months that you put in and then you take out after three months and it emits estrogen into the vagina. And most of that estrogen just stays in the vagina. Very minimal bits of it go into the bloodstream. So very little change in your overall hormone panel just for your vaginal tissues. Number six, use sex aids. Now, what do I mean by sex aids? So these are specific things that can help people who have issues with mobility, difficulty with balance, or just general fatigue. It can help you actually get positioned in certain ways or do certain types of activities easier and allow you to continue having sex even if you've suffered an issue like a stroke or you're having weakness or things like that. There's a great video I'm gonna put in the description by an occupational therapist who goes over all of these and I'll talk about them briefly as well, but she talks about them for patients with spinal cord injuries. And this is a great video and I think it applies to anyone who's having issues having sex because of the way their body moves or doesn't move after a certain age. So there's a few different aids out there. You can also buy foam positioning pillows that are kind of firmer than your average pillow that can help you stay in certain positions. You can get wedges, you can get rockers, you can get ramps, all different types of ways and use them to position yourself or your partner so that they're more comfortable during intercourse. You can also look online and find these as uh, not sex pillows and kind of use them for that purpose because they can be a little bit more affordable. You can also get position support straps or door jam swings which can help you kind of position your partner or you position yourself in a certain way that makes it easier to perform oral or penetrative sex. There's also this thing called a G-spot link which can actually help you raise your partner's legs if they have some weakness or difficulty raising their legs. And lastly, if you get fatigued easily, adding vibrators into your repertoire is certainly a great way to help keep sex exciting and interesting and be able to help yourselves and your partner reach climax. Number seven, be optimistic. A survey study called the National Development of Midlife in the United States surveyed about 3,500 people 45 years and older. They surveyed them first at one point and then 10 years later again. They asked them how often they had sex and what their satisfaction with sex was. They also asked them about what they thought about their future sex life. So they said, looking into your future 10 years from now, what do you expect the sexual aspect of your life to be like? Zero being the worst and 10 being the best. And what they found was those people who were the most optimistic or closest to 10 on that question, saying that they felt that they would have great sex in 10 years, were more likely to have more frequent and more satisfying sex. And this was even more powerful than some other things like having mobility issues. So for example, women who had mobility issues had significantly more frequent and satisfying sex if they were optimistic compared to those who were not. They even outperformed the people who were not optimistic but had no mobility issues. So optimism was a really important part of it. And like I always say, the brain is the most powerful organ you have for sex. And number eight, the one you've all been waiting for is that even if you're having trouble with erections, for example, you can still orgasm. And you might be saying, well, I, I don't know if I want that. But you know, at some point for some people, unfortunately, they may not be having erections, they may not have access to care, or they may not be able to afford treatment for erectile dysfunction, in which case you can still have amazing, wonderful orgasms. And how do you do it? Well, you get stimulated in other ways. Spend time with your partner and explore your erogenous zones. Maybe it's the ear, maybe it's the nipple, maybe it's the in part of your arm whatever it is spend time with your partner without the expectation of penetrative sex and to touch those areas feel those areas kiss those areas find out what really turns you and your partner on and you can still achieve orgasm without an erection so I've heard people say pleasure is the measure not performance I think it's Emily Nagoski but I'm not sure so don't quote me on that but try to focus on pleasure and not so much on performance
performance because as you age, performance can suffer. Not that you should, there's lots and lots of treatments available for erectile dysfunction, but if for some reason you are having issues, focus on pleasure. I hope you guys love this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe and share this channel with your friends. And if you enjoyed this video, you're probably gonna love my video on sex after 60, so make sure you check that one out. As always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.